So the other day I was feeling a little bit tyrannical, and I decided that it would be a good idea to make a mob boat of my own for the mod I'm making. So I gave three options for you guys to choose from, those being the Driplet and its older brother, these guys will also add an extra weapon to the game, the Cultivator, which will occasionally drop seeds a bit like a chicken because I'm not smart enough to make you plant seeds on its back, and also the final guy which is like your own little personal bodyguard. He's pretty awesome, he doesn't have a name though. So, I gave that poll a couple days to sit, and here's what you guys voted for. Congratulations! And so, because this mob won the boat, I'm dedicating this video to running through my process on how I'll add this mob to the game. Oh, and as a bonus, just because I'm nice, I'm adding the other two mobs to the mod. They just aren't taking the spotlight of this video. Oh, and uh, one last thing, for those of you looking for more content, you can either check out my YouTube community tab where I post behind the scenes content and bonus videos, you can join the Discord, or follow my Twitch. And now, let's get this show on the road. Minecraft, as of current, has about 80 entities, not including stationary ones such as item frames. Each mob has a unique feature that either aids the player, or gives me lines of code I can rip from the game files, like the bat. Useless in game, but good for coding flying entities that you want to be sporadic. To start making one of these entities, we have to use a software called Blockbench to be able to model it out. Now usually I would just go absolutely crazy with this, but because I'm constricted to the actual texture file that I made earlier of just the little dude and his other big brother, so I have to do my best to copy exactly what I drew so people don't get mad at me. The little driplet itself was actually quite easy, it was literally just a cube with a couple legs and a dripstone spike on top of it. To also make the texture, I used the dripstone texture from the actual game, and I just copy and pasted pretty much all those colours over and changed them around a bit so they fitted the little guy. I also added a little face to him, and that's pretty much him done, except for the animations, which we'll do afterwards. To make his older brother, I pretty much replicated the exact model of the Enderman from Minecraft. Someone in one of the Discord servers, I mean, said that he looks a bit like Rick from Rick and Morty, but unfortunately for them, the spikes around his head are actually not hair, and are in fact a frill that he will use to display when he's being threatened or attacking. He also has this little shoulder piece. I don't, I'm not really sure why, I just kind of added that as an aesthetic choice, and uh, it, yeah, it's there. Look at that. So this is looking pretty much on point, so I'll chuck a dripstone texture over him like I did with the other one, make sure to replicate the in-game texture as much as possible so it doesn't look out of place, and we are pretty much on to making some animation. Right, so animations in the software block bench run off a little thing called keyframing systems where pretty much I get to move things at certain intervals of time and they will save in place and it'll do like a splining system between the two so it moves smoothly. So say I put one keyframe at like zero seconds, another one at one, then the leg that I'm moving or rotating during that time frame will move smoothly from that position to the next one. And that's pretty much how the entire thing works and you can just move each individual limb which will be rigged via it being parented to certain areas of the model and if I just repeat the process until I've fully animated model, I can then export it to Java and I can put it into my coding software so the model and also the animation will work in the game. Which as you can see here, I've made an idle, an attack and a walking animation for the driplet and also then I went through and animated the big brother of him and made the now dubbed Stalag Titan have an attack, a walk and an idle animation as well. And if I did this correctly then they should appear in game just like so. Now you're probably sitting there thinking, how the fuck did he just drag and drop that shit from Blockbench straight into Minecraft? Well, fairly simply, I did not. It was a couple hours worth of work, so let's go through that because we're about to do some coding. Yippee. To be able to add one entity, you need quite a few different files. This includes a main class file where you can register the entity, a client file where you can also register the entity for the actual model, another file to actually register the entity's name and also how big the hitbox will be, a Java file exported from Blockbench so you actually have the model, an animations file that you exported from Blocksbench as well, the texture, an actual entity file that has all the attributes that you actually want the entity to have inside of it, a renderer file so you can actually see the model in game, a feature renderer file if you actually want to have something over the top like glowing eyes or etc. And if you want any custom goals for the mob to have like an attack goal, you have to make a separate class file for that as well. So in conclusion, I'm not explaining all of those. But yeah, that was the generalized gist of it. And like I said in the last video, go visit Corp and Joe's channel for an actual tutorial on how to do that because my ass ain't teaching you. So you're probably thinking now, oh, so we're done, right? Uh, the video's over. Or you'd be wrong. I promised an extra weapon to be added to the mod alongside these two mobs. So let's add the weapon real quick. So let me register it. Let me add a texture. Let me add it inside the language file. Let me add some attributes to it. Make a little bit of a material for the actual tool set. But there's only going to be one tool. And bada bang, bada boom, would you look at that. Now we have 
a dripstone shank. Welcome to the UK. So in conclusion, the driplet and the stalic titan both now spawn inside of the dripstone biome. The driplet has about 5 hearts of health and the stalic titan has 30. They both dropped a new item called the dripstone shard which can be crafted with a bone to make the dripstone shank which will do approximately 8 hearts of damage and can only be used 3 times for each weapon. In other words, that means it's more of a quick use weapon for tricky situations rather than actually using on the daily. And we're all good. That's all 3 features that I actually promised I would make in this video. For the record, I am also adding the other 2 mobs that I did say I would add at the start of the video. They're currently in work in progress. Here's the fully modelled Calcite Golem, which was the little buddy fella, and here's the partially modelled Cultivator. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. <coughs> I also um, added a secret mob.